after enduring the torment of a malevolent entity in his previous haunted residence. Dino Nugget 741 took proactive measures based on his viewers' recommendations. He disposed of all his old possessions and relocated to a new house, ensuring it had no dark history and that every item within was brand new. However, despite these efforts, it appears that the entity has managed to follow him to his new abode. One fateful night, while alone at home, he heard unsettling noises, prompting him to record the occurrences. What unfolds during this recording proves to be a harrowing ordeal. Upon hearing sudden bangs reverberating throughout the house, he investigates, only to witness boxes inexplicably moving on their own accord. However, this unsettling occurrence is merely the precursor to a series of escalating and intensifying paranormal activities within his home. On another ominous night, he captures something truly horrifying. What the fuck? Yeah. <sighs> 
Get. Store is closed. The fuck do you want from me? For the love of God, leave my house. Leave me alone. Yes. As he approaches the stairs, a dark shadow figure swiftly darts across the hallway and into one of the rooms, prompting him to conduct a thorough search. Despite his efforts, he finds no trace of any presence within the house. Shortly thereafter, a door begins to violently open and close on its own, adding to his growing frustration and fear. Convinced that the entity is fixated on him, he grapples with the unsettling realization that it is likely attached to him rather than any object or location. Danny, a father, shares unsettling experiences involving his young son and apparent attempts at communication from the other side. According to Danny, they resided in an antiquated basement apartment where he couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. Danny would frequently allow his son to roam through the cavernous empty corridors until one fateful day when the boy's curiosity was piqued by a mysterious mirror he stumbled upon. Okay, so this is the craziest shit I've seen so far. I was taking the trash out with my son and he kept pointing at the mirror and waving and I didn't know why. So I pulled the camera out and I can't believe I caught this. That's Rowan. As Danny's son innocently pointed at himself in the mirror, a chilling development unfolded. The reflection of another child's face materialized beside his own. This spectral visage stared back at Danny, its presence unnerving and inexplicable. Strangely, the ghostly face bore a striking resemblance to Danny's son, adding an unsettling layer of intrigue to the encounter. However, this eerie occurrence was not an isolated incident involving the mirror. It's been a while since we stopped at the mirror and we were taking the dog out and Rowan wanted to go check it out. And uh, I can't believe we caught this. Whoa. <gasps> Uh, Rowan seems hyped and he's trying to explain to me what he just saw. <laughs> Buddy? Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know about that, bud. Once more, as Rowan gazed into the mirror, an unsettling sight emerged. A small, ghostly apparition materialized within the reflection before vanishing just as swiftly. Upon closer inspection, the spectral figure bore a resemblance to the face previously captured in the mirror, intensifying the eerie atmosphere surrounding the mysterious object. The question arises, is this mirror truly haunted, or could these occurrences be the result of an elaborate hoax? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Paranormal investigators Dustin and Lisa from the YouTube channel the South CAC 2.0 embarked on a journey to the derelict Lake Shawnee Amusement Park in Princeton, West Virginia. Erected in 1926, this modest amusement park fell short of contemporary safety standards. Tragically, it is estimated that a total of six individuals, mostly children, met their demise within its confines. In 1966, the park was closed and left abandoned. However, persistent tales abound that the lingering spirits of its former visitors continue to haunt the desolate grounds to this day. Dustin and Lisa commence their investigation near the abandoned swing ride, the site where a young girl, 
lost her life. In an attempt to make contact with the spirits, Lisa initiates a pendulum session. This involves posing questions to the park's ethereal inhabitants while observing the pendulum for any autonomous movements. The subsequent events unfold in a manner that is undeniably eerie. The little girl that's here, the object that I'm holding, it kind of looks like a necklace and you're more than welcome to touch it. It just lets me know answers to questions that I ask you. So feel free to answer as much or as little as you would like. Do you like it here at Lake Shawnee? And that's a yes. Have you noticed it? As Lisa communicates with the spirit of the young girl who met her unfortunate end on the swing ride, a shadowy figure can be discerned walking from right to left behind the two investigators. Despite Dustin and Lisa being oblivious to the presence, Continuing their investigation without any apparent awareness of what transpired, the camera captured this mysterious occurrence. One might speculate that the spirit of a deceased child visitor from the park emerged, perhaps attempting to communicate with Lisa during the session. Share your thoughts on this intriguing incident. The full investigation is available for viewing on the SouthCAC 2.0 YouTube channel. Paranormal investigator Chrysel Luna, with eight years of experience exploring haunted places, claims that a peculiar dark presence seems to have attached itself to her, even following her home. In her new apartment in the Dominican Republic, she installs multiple cameras around her home to capture the strange paranormal activity she faces daily. One night, as Chrysel sleeps, her security camera records something unsettling. Eerily, a pillow at the foot of Chriselle's bed starts moving, rocking back and forth without any apparent cause. Following this, a painting on the wall slowly rotates. The sound of the painting scraping along the wall wakes Chriselle, leaving her confused about the strange noise's origin. The next night, she is once again awakened by peculiar sounds but this time the unsettling noises emerge from her empty, dark bathroom. She quickly grabs her phone and starts recording, capturing something absolutely unnerving. <laughs>
A eerie, mist-like figure is visible moving around in Chriselle's bathroom. However, when she goes in to investigate, there's nothing there. Is Chriselle haunted by a dark presence? Or is there another explanation? Share your thoughts. You can watch the full video and explore more creepy investigations on Chriselle's YouTube channel, Chriselle Luna. Following scary video is from the Fran Devil from Mexico. He shares a frightening experience. Francesco has been documenting his recent encounters with the paranormal over the past few months, seeking help and advice on social media. After moving into a new house, strange things started happening to him. He would hear loud bangs during the day and night, creepy laughter echoed through his home, and his things would be mysteriously misplaced. Francesco believes he's being haunted by a dark and malicious entity, and judging by the comments under his videos, it seems many others agree. In the first clip, Francesco, who is alone at the time, hears loud noises from his bathroom. He grabs his phone, starts recording, and goes to investigate. Empiezo a grabar porque estoy collando sonido desde el baño muy raro y estoy solo en casa. Loud banging sounds are heard from inside Francesco's bathroom. He opens the door, finding nothing visibly wrong. But then, the shower curtain starts moving on its own, eventually falling off and crashing to the floor, as if something unseen pulled it down. Unfortunately for Francesco, this is just the beginning of his unsettling experience. Mi nueva casa está embrujada. Hola. Acabo de activar la cámara, chico, porque estoy escuchando sonidos de nuevo que vienen de la habitación. Hola. ¿Qué es lo que quiere? ¿Hay alguien en mi casa? ¿Hay alguna entidad? ¿Hola? Miren, 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 chico, miren. Hola. Francesco discovers a child's toy keyboard playing by itself and can't be switched off. A sudden loud bang startles him. Later that night, he hears disruptive noises from the opposite end of his hallway, and a door shuts right in front of him, leaving Francesco thoroughly creeped out. In the next clip, he is once again disturbed by loud bangs and bravely decides to investigate. Señoras, estoy grabando porque estoy escuchando otra vez los sonidos. Escuche. ¿Qué cojones? ¡Hostia! Coño. Se acaba de encender otra vez el aparato ese. ¿Qué cojones? a encenderse eso?
Hola. Terrified by these strange events and feeling helpless, Francesco seeks help by online community. De locos. Acabo de encender las luces. Me acaba de despertar un golpe de loco fuera de mi cuarto. Entonces yo quiero pedir a alguien que sepa de, de cosas paranormales, ¿no? Que si me puede ayudar me deje algún consejo en la caja de comentarios porque encima hoy me entero de que falleció una anciana en esta casa o sea yo me fui de mi anterior casa porque creía que era la casa y no hay algo que me persigue y no sé si tendré un don o no pero es una cosa de locos señores en la caja de comentarios por favor si me pueden dar algún consejo urgente de que pueda hacer se los agradecería porque esto es de loco buenas noches Francesco reaches out online, looking for someone knowledgeable about paranormal matters. He shares that he discovered an old woman had passed away in his house. He also expresses the feeling of being followed, recounting similar terrifying experiences from his previous home. Determined to seek help, Francesco manages to retrieve the contact details of a priest he knew from the past and calls him for assistance. Buenas, Padre José, mire que me han dado su número y quiero hacerle una consulta, si no es molestia, eh, que me están sucediendo cosas en mi casa paranormales y llevo por lo menos eh, cuatro meses con esto. Entonces, a ver si usted me, pod me podría ayudar. Mm, yo lo conozco desde que era pequeñito, lo que no sé si se acuerda de mí, soy Frank. Yo creo que sí. ¿Se acuerda cuando iba a la iglesia? Con mi madre y eso. Por favor, necesito su ayuda. Francisco, yo te conozco desde que eras chico. Y no es la casa. No es la casa. Eres tú. Pero Padre José, eh, ¿qué es lo que tengo pegado a mí? Porque ya, si no es la casa, algo tengo que tener, ¿no? Francisco. Eso lo tendrás que averiguar por ti mismo. Y te aseguro que no es nada fácil. Pero son cosas paranormales. Que mucha gente se cree que no existe. Pero ahí están. Lo estás viviendo en tus propias carnes. Y te tendrás que averiguarlo por ti mismo. Pero Padre José, usted no me puede ayudar. Padre José, por favor. Lléme una mano. Francisco, esas son cosas que son inevitables. Yo mismo lo he vivido y me estuvieron persiguiendo igual que usted. Y tienes que conseguirlo y averiguarlo por ti mismo. Son cosas inevitables. Así que te deseo lo mejor. Espero que salgas de todo esto, que no es nada fácil. Vale, Padre José, pues nada. Muchas gracias por su ayuda, que ha sido ninguna. Vale, venga. Following a discussion with Father Jose about the unsettling events in his home, Francesco is left with a chilling revelation. It's not the house that's haunted. The entity is actually following Francesco throughout his entire life. Fortunately, the disturbances calm down for a few weeks. However, one night, Francesco is awakened by frightening noises from another part of his house. Too scared to confront it, he decides to leave his phone recording and captures the eerie sounds. A terrifying noise resembling raspy breathing and moaning echoes from somewhere in Francesco's house. The incident leaves him deeply frightened, convinced that whatever is haunting him is growing stronger, especially since he has never heard such sounds before. In this concluding clip, Francesco's instinctive feeling proves to be accurate. Chicos, estoy escuchando ruido super fuerte y empezando a grabar. 
Son las 12 de la noche. Upon hearing another loud noise, Francesco investigates. When he turns on the light, several loud knocks follow, and a creepy pale face suddenly appears at the door. Francesco, frightened by what he sees, quickly flees in the opposite direction. These clips leaves all the viewers scared, with many believing Francesco is haunted by something evil. However, some argue that Francesco staged the whole thing for just fame. What's your take? Do you think Francesco is genuinely haunted or was it all just for views? Share your thoughts.